Okay, good evening. We'll just uh, go back, go a little uh, to the learning objectives. Okay, this is just a recap of what we did yesterday till for about a couple of minutes. Okay, so this is the principal thing which we are trying to do. We are trying to demonstrate skills in planning, leadership, organization, financing. Okay, and the other very important thing which I have or which I want you guys to uh, think about is just minimize this. Understanding labor loss and then having safety as a way of life. Safety is very important because uh, you will find that it's very sad that incidents take place. Any place, be the construction site, be anywhere else, incidents are very sad. So we have to avoid it and also it helps you in reducing the insurance costs. Okay, because this will form the basis for all the other things which we are doing. How you take a decision, how you do your decision is based on the uh, way you uh, go about a lot of things. Today's newspaper had an uh, article. Mahatma Gandhi National Employment Scheme is there, in which everybody is getting a chance to get employed. Some manual labor is ensured to be got. That would be a very good place for you to stay in your talent pool. I mean, your your labor pool. pool. I can't say talent pool. Your labor force. Now there is a catch. Unless the person has some other card, you are not supposed to hire that person. Okay, now that's the rule which is coming into force today. So like that we were talking about the effects of demonetization. One of the things was construction industry is coming under the purview of uh, where you have to pay using checks or transfer to bank account. Okay. So it means if you are having a construction company, you are not going to be in a position to write on a piece of paper vouchers that I paid cash of so many hundreds or so many thousand rupees to this person. So like this, the changes are so many and that we need to keep, uh, we need to be on our feet and uh, ensure that we are doing it. So these are some of the things which I want you to go about. Okay. Now I am just going to, uh, we are just going to have the attendance taken now. After the attendance we will move on to my uh, presentation okay so okay so we'll uh, we'll return to our presentation so um, today as I was telling we'll be going through some of the things that make us what we are civil engineers work on contracts sometimes you know uh, so what is a contract have you heard of this word contract? How many of your parents are contractors? So what's a contract? We present some quotations like based on it, so on what rates we will be working. Yes. And then the departments seeing the quotations which is, whichever is low and feasible to the department they allot the work. Okay. It's a, it's a contract is a form of agreement. Contract is an agreement between two parties. Sorry? Between client and the uh, person who is taking up that job. So, who is called as the contractor. Okay. So, uh, life works on contracts in so many ways. Sometimes it is spoken. Sometimes it is unspoken. Marriage itself is like a contract. I don't know if you will agree with me. But you do something. I will do something. Okay, I promise my wife certain things on the day of my marriage. Till death do us part. Okay. <laughs> so that is a more binding contract what we take up probably. But in the same way, you will find that contracts are enforceable by law. If the contract goes bad, that is being enforced by law. Including the marriages. Family courts are there. But for civil engineers, we don't go into family courts, we go for special courts earmarked for the purpose. So that is something which you are going to learn. It is just that we want everything to go well, but we also should know what should what, what should be done when something goes wrong. Okay. So I just want to introduce you to some contracts and uh, forms of contracts. And uh, if you have a look at this. Okay. Right. How many of you know this 
I had the fortune of uh, really God's grace that I worked with this company, this company, and this company. Nothing, uh, nothing there that made that small. Just so happened that I got a logo that size. Okay, and Technip has been our uh, consultant on some of the projects. GMR has been some of uh, has been a contractor in some of the uh, projects. Of course, I have not uh, worked much with. Uh, I have not done work for Reliance Infrastructure or the others, but you'll find that uh, these are the places where you know you would like to work. Okay, uh, is there a company here which I have missed? Who is a contracting major? I am just looking at contracting majors. Have you thought of a contracting major where you want to work? Huh? Gammon, very good. Sapurji, Palonji, in fact, they are some of the, they are the best in uh, taking our people, I guess. So on and so forth. Okay. So on and so forth. The list is very long. And you will find that there are some very small players also in this. They will be like name, not without much name. John and Associates. I am talking about myself. Anybody knows it? Might not. In fact, I don't even have an office. And I don't do it. But I wish I was having a practice. So that is also some of the things which some of you may be thinking of. If you are thinking like, you know, what you are doing, John and Associates, it's going to come, stuff like that. This is the place where I want you to start. Put your name and say that I want to be a contractor. Okay. See, the benefit of, uh, uh, first let's see uh, who is a contractor. So, he is an independent entity that agrees to furnish certain number of goods or quantity of goods. I am going to make 12 flats for such and such company. Okay. So, that is a thing which you can do. You may be a material contractor. I will issue, I will supply to you say 15,000 bags of cement per month. Okay. So, you are trying to make an agreement. You may say that I am going to give so many thousand tons of steel, structural steel at such and such price. I am going to ensure that you got such and such equipment. Equipment is a very costly thing. In fact, even people like LNT don't own many of the equipment. A crane, for instance, is not generally owned by an organization because it's a very costly asset to maintain and there is no guarantee that the same asset will be uh, away, uh, required over an extended period of time. So, equipment may be done. Again, the last thing, the personal, uh, the personals, you know, you sh uh, sending out personals, that is a very big uh, thing. For instance, you have all heard about how Indians are getting caught in some of the countries, unable to return back. They are asking our government to intervene and help them to come back. Okay? So, it means that somebody is going to say that I am going to contract out myself to a company and then have them pay me for the service which I render. So, that, that is also something which can happen. In fact, there is another thing, the service also is a contract. For instance, the, some of the security guards whom you see in our uh, campus, they are all on a contract. Our organization does not want to take a huge workforce on its role. So, we contract out the services. What about your catering? How many caterers you have? Hey, come on here. You can at least answer this question. Something which I don't know, you can help me tell. So, how many caterers you got? Darling, Arasan? That's all. BR. Okay, so some three or four people are coming forward to supply food of certain quality and certain quantity. So many people are going to eat. So, I am going to give you the food at such and such thing. So, that is also a service which is being provided. So, contracts can be of so many different kinds. In fact, if you are going to have a very big construction site, security would be one of the things which you mostly outsource. Okay? Then there is also another thing which you outsource, it is the food. Okay? Food is also something which you generally outsource. So, you may need to have all of this done. Again, the important thing about a contract is it should meet the expectation. At least it should meet the expectation. Expectation of the owner. It's good if it 
it surpasses the expectation but what happens is the minimum criteria is that uh, uh, specification should be met again you will meet the criteria just imagine you suppose they served uh, lunch at 2 o'clock or 2.30 do you think it is acceptable your mess that is the same thing which happens upon to a contract also it has to be done within a specified timeline okay. and it should be done within a specified timeline okay that is something which is again very important now these are some of the things for which a tender can be called out for okay, these are some of the things which a tender can be called for it is quite a it is quite a variety of things which is used so you can be calling a tender for uh, any of these things O and M stands for operation and maintenance work ok so again another thing is retrofitting for instance if you take a, a chemical plant or something you will find that the pumps will run out uh, like you know they after a certain period of time you are forced to uh, change the pump or the motor or whatever ok or you might have to add certain things because the uh, you have to retrofit the equipment which is there because of environmental issues or something so that is also something for which they give the contracts out for ok so other than that I do not know I think other things are quite clear so I am just going on a little further out ok so there is there are certain things which the owner has to do the owner has to do certain things usually if you are in the contractor side which you are most likely going to be you will call that as going to the clients or you know that is a clients job so this is the things which you do typically you have a vendor registration process then you got a tender announcement then you will also add some corrigendum again you will process the tender forms which come to you then you open it negotiate on it and then you go for the award of the job ok now I will just uh, uh, briefly go through these points vendor registration is uh, if you are a contractor you will have to uh, go to the owner and register on their system by the system we mean that you know they have their own uh, ERP portals and on the ERP portal like you know you would have heard of tally and all that software right which helps in the accounting so you will be going and registering yourself as a civil contractor or a structural contractor and then once you register yourself as a civil or a structural contractor and you show that you are eligible to do such work then only they are going to allow you to bid for a job ok now I told two words civil and structural what is the difference between civil and structural in fact uh, I was doing that in the morning today what is civil what is structural any work which you are ok structural steel work is whatever you have in foodies where whatever you the trust which you have over MB or even over hex or wherever so anything which is having structural steel it is called as structural work it is called structural work whatever else remains it is all called civil works whatever remains is called civil work so you have to be very specific on where you are registering yourself are you a vendor for supplying stationery or are you a vendor for supplying material like you know only structural steel any specific thing could be in. so you you see what you supply ok and uh, again another thing is the process is where the owner first identifies a need owner identifies a need he will do some back calculation that is he will do some calculation in the uh, his back office he will see whether it is really required see for instance the CTS building behind CTS building a new building has come up so before the job is called out for before they do it the person will sit and see how much cost it is going to take place I am sure that I do not know uh, how many of your parents have sat with you and discussed uh, when they bought their house your parents have sat and discussed no so usually what happens before they take up the project they will have to sit and see how much it is going to cost them how much they are having the money there is no point in going and buying a house for 60 lakhs when you know you cannot get more than 30 lakhs 
Okay, so that's what we mean by it. So the person sits and works and sees whether he is going to be able to do the job. Okay, so then after everything is done, they will announce the tender in the newspaper. You will be able to see this in all of our Hindu and almost all the newspapers carry notice for tender. So it will be a just a, it will be sometimes just a short thing which says we want certain job done. Those who are willing, please visit this website. Or it may be even much more detailed. Okay. And after you announce a tender, sometimes you know you, you have a second thought and say, yes, I want something added to it. Please don't make yellow paint, put pink paint all over. So that is something which you know you put it as a corrigendum, something which you add as an addition. Okay. Then once we put the tender across, five or six of the people would have come and they would be telling this is the price at which we are working. So they will all be standardized. They will all be put one uh, what we call as an apple to apple comparison. What is this? It means that if suppose somebody is saying I am using M35 lightweight concrete, it is not the same as M30 uh, normal concrete. Because you are using lightweight concrete, your foundation everything is becoming lighter. Your beam is becoming lighter. Every All your uh, uh, sections are uh, reducing in size. So, but the, the, there is a component that increases the cost but then the overall picture is not the same. So they will work out a mechanism by which they are able to bring all the players onto the same platform. Typically what happens is uh, if you took, lay, uh, take an industrial project, the mechanical, the electrical and other uh, players, HVAC for instance, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, these people will have the cost. Uh, much higher because the equipment and process cost is much higher than the civil and structural works which we quote for. Okay, So what happens is one person might have a superior process. For instance, in a, uh, in a, in a transfer tower, that is in a, in a conveyor belt system, the place where the conveyor changes direction is called a transfer tower. Typically you will have a motor, you will have a drive assembly to make the belt move. If you take a multi-phase motor like a three-phase motor the size of the motor is very small when compared to a single phase motor which is very very large so what happens is when you are having a single phase motor your structural building becomes very big footprint becomes very big because the motor is very large on the other hand the cost of the motor is very cheap a three-phase motor is much more costly than a single phase motor the control system for a three-phase motor is much higher than a single phase motor. So you see two parts are there in the contract. One is because of electrical and you know the equipment you are reducing the size of the building. But on the other hand the other costs go up. So how is it that we are going to be able to work out on uh, the cost. So this is where the tender form processing comes into picture. The technical part should be evaluated. Okay. Guys I can hear you. Okay, please don't make me outshout you. Okay, thank you. So, this is what we call as the tender form processing. Okay, and then there is something called uh, opening. Uh, this could be uh, it could be after opening. Sometimes you know the system automatically does the processing. So, because all this stuff is now uploaded online, all the stuff is uploaded online. Very few uh, people are still accepting the paper contract. So uh, this this step is you know this way or that way. Then there is negotiation. Uh, whenever you are going for a product, especially you know Tanay will know purchase, you have done some purchase work right in VIT. Yes. yes. Yeah. So when you go you will find that the purchase office will have such a nice mechanism for bargaining. They will bargain and you know sometimes they will reduce the cost till 25 percent in many of the cases. Okay, of course, maybe I don't know about your case, but many of the purchases which you get for the department, you'll find that uh, they are able to do a very good job in negotiation. So also, you know, like both the parties, both the contractor as well as the owner will have people for the negotiation part. The contractor, you know, has to give some and take some. Then only, you know, you, you, you actually get it done. And then the lowest person may get the the person with the lowest price may get the job. Now the thing is, he is quoting the lowest job 
giving the specification and quality the quality he cannot compromise the quality is fixed the specifications are the same this stand up form processing uh, essentially you know you go about ensuring that all the technical requirements of the project are satisfied nothing is there which is uh, which is just open or kept in the air okay so once you do all of this you are in a very good position for going about the contract okay now there are two places where we can be we can be the contractors or you may be in the side of the owner you will be in a position to screw up the contractors see whether the terms of the contract are being fulfilled okay so a civil engineer can fit in both the places okay now i i uh, i am going to open a tender document to you so yeah for instance tenderwizard.com is one of the websites which uh, publishes tenders so you can see the number of agencies for which the uh, site caters most of the government tenders are being put through tender wizard and you can if you are you know usually you don't like to go very far from your home state for taking up a job typically your company will grow they'll take for example first in tamil nadu after they are established they'll see the market in kerala and then they may probably expand and so on and so forth so it will be very it's very rare that a company will start you know very far from home okay now i prefer the cpwd only because it's uh, usually pan india most of the specifications are common for across the country okay and of course uh, now these are the tenders which cpwd has this this is taking a little time to load so i'm just going straight to the website which is there. oh it's not sorry i'm so sorry it's not repeating that hey guys if something like that happens you please tell me i was thinking it was duplicating okay right so uh, now 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 these are the people for which tender wizard is helping okay so i am particularly going for the um, cpwd is thing and again uh, if you see you will find that uh, yes here it is can you see the lot of things which is coming out here okay so the date on which it's required it's got a unique tender number and then again can you see there's something called the corrigendum so what is this corrigendum if you go to this particular tender number see you can see the tender number over here so the tender number is uh, going to have some change so that change is being specified in this form sometimes they may give you additional specification maybe it will be an extension maybe it will be a deletion of an item of work so it means that you have to as a contractor you should be very familiar with the tender document as well as the corrigendum which accompanies it okay so this is uh, this is a one typical way by which it is done now what i did is i just went for the e tender went to active tender so when i do that i get this um, screen okay so now in fact if you see that uh, the, uh, bef be, uh, between the time when i first saw this and now additional things are coming into the equation now if you see 1 2 3 4 5 are there and here if you see this is 1 2 that is in the past about 1 hour about five tenders have got updated now all the five are not big works all the five are not construction works some of them would be simply the uh, what shall we say uh, they may be only the works for uh, some small maintenance okay so maintenance of fans and fixing cable trays so something like that is put in anyway i am going to open the document i am i am in particular looking at this tender ar and mo okay architectural and maintenance of uh, residential quarters so on and so forth okay now if you go through this tender it is it will you will find that it has all the tenders have certain common things all the tenders will have certain common uh, items of uh, work 
first will be the cover page so they give an estimated cost there's a cost estimate which says this project we have you know we told that the contra the uh, uh, the client or the buyer he will have already done some homework so according to cpwd this will come to around 14.2 lakhs around 14.2 lakhs is the estimate which they got and the earnest money which they are charging is 28402 so 28402 uh, what is emd we don't know whether the person is serious when he is submitting his document so the buyer will ask the people to give some money called the earnest money are you earnestly really wanting to do the work for example your vat application form it's fully downloaded right so why the devil are they asking you to pay for it whether one person fills or hundred percent fill is there any cost difference but then we want only the people who are serious to come forward so for that only we've got this emd and again how long do they estimate the project it is going to be six months okay now this date is 16 1 2017 today is 9th so there are seven more days in case you are in the locality of, if you are in ahmedabad and if you are able to do this work you can also bid for this job that's the meaning of this okay now uh, i i will ask you to go through this uh, by yourself i'm just looking at the index okay see it it is it depends emd depends on the pro, it varies from project to project sometimes they may uh, they may put it as a very high percentage sometimes they may not and another thing is emd will be returned to the unsuccessful bidders suppose you bid you are unsuccessful it will be returned with the rider that is if you are casually bidding then they they know that it's a casual bid they may retain it second thing is if you are coming to the l1 you say that you know i have uh, i am going to satisfy all the criteria i will do the work so you have given in writing but then when the bid is awarded to you you say no 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 i cannot do it for 20 lakhs i may have to do it for 25 lakhs that time what they'll do is they'll retain the emd they may have to go for a fresh tender okay so that is the that is what we that is the thing about emd okay, probably i should have gone through it a little more so they, they you see you will find that most of the things are uh, quite you know self explanatory one of the things is the special conditions see most of the uh, we were talking that you know like we were uh, we have worked for so many consultants for example eil is one of the very big consultants for uh, many of the central government projects engineers india limited so what happens with engineers india these people uh, they have standardized everything right to the screw for a door so lamp post uh, you name it bathroom fixtures everything is standardized so they just dump a huge document to you say go through it if you say i have a doubt they say no 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 that is there in fact it will be there only thing is it will be so voluminous that you may not be able to locate it in the short period of time okay so those are all what we call as you know uh, as a very general specification then they'll have very special conditions which will be applicable only for that project typically if you go to any army installation you'll find that many of the things are standardized the way the gate is placed the way the barbed wire is kept the way the lights are fixed all of them are standardized so then what will happen is if suppose it's in kashmir they may have some specific requirements in rajasthan they may have a different re requirement so those will come under special conditions special conditions can also not, need not only be technical they may also be related to the financial aspects so how you pay how much you pay when you pay how you deliver so they will give this uh, special and additional conditions okay so on and so forth now these three items are the uh, are the see these two these two items <coughs> which you are seeing here are the ones which we are going to be very uh, which we are very interested in honest money we talked about then there is something called bank guarantee sometimes for many of the projects the honest money will be in the order of a few crores 
the duration or the length over which the project is uh, bid for is also very very long. For example, if you take a petrochemical plant, usually it will be even one year, it will be even going on for one year. So what happens is and, a co and a, what would be the cost, it may be in the order of sometimes even a billion dollars. A company cannot afford to invest um, a few million dollars as earnest money. So instead of that they will have a bank guarantee. What is this bank guarantee? The bank will say I will take care of this money in the event that this company fails. So you are not paying the buyer any money. The moment you give an EMD to me, I will keep it in my bank account and earn interest. You will not be able to earn interest. So instead of that if you give a bank guarantee, I will still accept it. But then what happens is, I won't earn any interest and what you will do is you will pay the bank a very small portion of that money to help you furnish that bond. Sometimes they may not even ask for that. For example, a company like LNT will have a few bankers. That banker will be willing to give the bond to LNT because they will say, you know, all the payments should go only through, say, I say, say bank. So then it becomes like, you know, the benefit is there for the bank also. So that is called as the bank guarantee. Other thing is the performance uh, guarantee. Usually whenever we are constructing something, uh, I don't know how many of you have bought flats. Within one year, you will find that when you walk, sometimes you hear sound from the bottom of the tiles. It means that the tiling work has not been done properly. Okay. So this sort of, or the paint will start to peel. You would have just bought the house, you would have kept the house, grab privation and all that. Next day, you will find that the paint is peeling off the walls. So is the painting been done well? So in that case, you need to have something to, some of, something of a hold on the contractor. So this is called a performance guarantee. So there may be 2 years, 5 years or 10 years performance guarantee depending on the project. Okay, depending. So after 10 years only you will be returned that performance guarantee. The other thing is the security deposit. Security deposit is something very similar to what you have in the hostel. Suppose something breaks, then that money is going to be reimbursed from that one. Okay. Now I am going to ask you to go through this uh, tender document. It's around 100 pages. Okay. Go through the various items, go through the various items and uh, when you read it, you will understand much more than what it is when it is told. Okay. So we will have a quiz based on this, online quiz of course not in the classroom. So when can we have it? Do not put it one month from now, two days or three days is the thing which I am looking at. After Pungal, okay. Then in that case, I'll also request you to look at one of the, the in the previous semester also I uh, had a, I have a video created of this nature. Okay, please go through that video also, and uh, I'll I'll upload that tender also because I'll upload this tender document as well as the old one into our Moodle page, so you'll be able to go through it. So uh, Pungal is on 14th, huh? Monday, next Monday. Huh? So next Monday can we, uh, Monday night can we have it? Quiz. Tuesday. Okay. No issues. So Tuesday uh, between 9 to around 9.30 you will be having it. And uh, yeah. So you will have to just study this tender and the questions will be only re restricted to this one. Thank you very much and uh, we will meet again I think uh, tomorrow. Huh? So we will meet again tomorrow, Wednesday. Huh? Wednesday, I am sorry, Wednesday. We will meet on Wednesday.